Yo, hello, and welcome to the Ant-Man channel. It is Friday. Is it? Wait, is it Friday? Really? Friday already, huh? Friday the 16th of May, 2014, and I am your host. I am the Ant-Man. If you guys have never seen this, this is probably going to be an antique pretty soon. You're probably never going to see these in anyone's houses pretty soon. And this isn't even one of the good ones. This is the new international version. I... Honestly, I think this is like the worst. I've, I've read other versions though, but this one has, I think it's a little tampered with. But anyways, it's the Word of God. It's the infallible Word of God. You can't go wrong. With whatever whatever uh, version you have, as long as you're reading it, all I got to say is, I, I'm impressed by that. I'm impressed by people who, who take time out for God and pray and worship Him and, and read His Word. I mean, we have a God that is, whether you believe in Him or not, He's God, and He's He's worth all of our, all of the, uh, all of our strength, all of our mind, all of our soul, all of our, all of our body, and um, I'm just so in the spirit, man. Like, no matter how bad things can get in your life, always remember that God is there for you, man, and He's really, and He's an amazing God. His strength and His arm is so un un. Describable, really, because it's indescribable because you can't, you can't put words to something that great. And uh, something I'm grateful for every day. I can never eat a meal without having to thank God for it, honestly, because it's just. I, I know too many things going on all over the world, and I just I'm too uh, I'm too grateful for everything that I have. So I cannot I cannot ever be ungrateful. I guess, but hey, man, whatever whatever kind of faith or God has given you by grace, ask for more. Ask for more of the Spirit. Ask for more of His goodness in you so that you will be in Christ always, growing in Him, being better. Um, I wrote a devotional today. I wrote a, like an exhortation on Facebook. It was about how the disciples asked, or the apostles to be more clear, they asked Jesus, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? And I, I, and it's, it's brilliant. If, you don't have, if you've never been on my Facebook, go look for it. And it's a, what a... Uh, I was kind of surprised I wrote that. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm just saying that. It's good to see when you're growing in Christ, right? Amen? All right. I got an article here from ClashDaily.com. Dump them. Ten friends you need to say goodbye to in your 20s by Clash Daily. I'm in my 20s. Hey, I'm like in my late 20s. I don't, you know, like some people when they get older, they don't like saying how old they are. But I don't really have a problem with that because it's kind of a, a compliment because I look like I'm like 18 years old but I'm, I'm 27 years old and um, if it's anything that God has taught me lately is that you're gonna lose friends for his sake you're gonna lose a lot of things for his sake because I wasn't always a Christian and I made friends in the wrong places and my friends mo a lot of my friends are still unbelievers and they don't they don't see how they are pushed around like the waves in the sea by the wind they're still living governed by their emotions they have no aim in life they have no real uh reverence that keeps them in check it's all and, and you see that in society now because nobody believes in god so there's no fear of god and now it's a culture of cruelty of death now so anyways elite daily these are some types of friends you might very well currently have in your life and should consider permanently removing the green-eyed monster New boyfriend or girlfriend? Big promotion? Win the lottery? Do you ever feel like your good news is making someone else miserable? If that miserable person is someone you call a friend, that's it's time to let him or her go. I know people like that too. When people see that you're depressed, they like that. They like Some people like that because it makes them feel better about themselves. Or they'll kick you when you're down because, you know, hey, you deserve it. If, you, if there's something you're going through, you deserve it. The world thinks like that. It's called self-righteousness. It blinds you to the, to the reality that none of us have control over the circumstances in our lives. And things are going to go, things are not going to always go your way. Self-righteousness, it, it produces a depravity that you will never help out another human being and you will add conditions to that. So if you have a friend that can't rejoice with you when you rejoice and can't mourn with you when you mourn, get rid of that friend. Seriously. Not a good friend. The flirt. If a friend flirts with your boyfriend or girlfriend, ex, or even crush, take this as a big red flag. Yeah, um, you know, I've been betrayed in that. Every single relation, I'm married now, by the way. I'm married and I'm happy and all that. But, like, 
every single relationship I had in the past was always ruined by somebody else. Because people cannot stand a happy person. They have to try to ruin your life if they know that you're, you're happy and you have a relationship. And it's funny because with men, jealousy, is it runs rampant in us. Like, if a guy sees you with a very beautiful girlfriend and they think that they're better than you, they'll go out of their way to try to go sabotage your relationship. I know people that that knew that girls had liked me and they'll go out of their way to go tell that girl things about me that aren't true just to get that opportunity away from me and if it's not God's will it's not God's will and if you have people in that in your life that are like that show them the door and uh, let them let them walk themselves out the back turner picture yourself in a tricky situation at a bar with some loudmouth fool yelling in your face where is your friend at this moment next to you trying to defuse the situation or silently retreating to the safe zone. You know what I see sometimes? Uh, I see an arrested development in society with people these days where if somebody sees somebody steal something from somebody else, they won't tell that person because it's all an arrested development type of mentality where I'm not going to be a snitch. No, what you're doing is you're breaking one of the Ten Commandments and you're bearing false witness. That's just one thing. That's a disgrace, and it's dishonorable. But two, is that, yeah, man, sometimes, you know, it's in our psyche that we either fight or we flight. If your friends are cowards, man, I guess you can't really be, a, you can't really, like, you know, hate them too much for that. Think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. All of his, all of his apostles, they fled away. And Judas was the one that betrayed him for a couple of measly pieces of silver. You know what I mean? It's a... Uh, you when when trouble hits you you don't be surprised when people run away and don't help you because that is how the world is man and uh if you're not a godly person there is no sense of sacrifice and there's no self self uh, there's no sense of of compassion and just sacrifice and wanting to go out and reach a hand out to people you know it's a sign of the fall adam was right next to Eve when Eve fell into sin because the because the serpent told her you could eat the you, you're surely not going to die God didn't say that or whatever he said. He, he, he tricked her. So Adam was standing right there and he didn't do one thing about it. That is a sign of the fall in all of us. When we stand around and do nothing, that is a sign of how our fallen nature, it, it, it operates that way. We stand around and we do nothing when things need to be done. The Christian is regenerated into the way that we do stuff for other people. So if people are, you know, people are cowards, don't, don't, you know, love mercy and be merciful to people like that. Show them, show them that, that hand that Jesus does of not condemning one another and empowering people, picking them up and encouraging them to keep going. So that's the back turner, the flaky type. Excuse me, that was gross. Does your friend regularly cancel plans with you last minute? Do you have the sneaky suspicion he or she is being non-committal or co committal in case or a, a, a better opportunity presents itself? In a case... A better opportunity presents itself. Having a flaky friend who repeatedly disappoints can be infuriating. Yeah, who doesn't have a friend like that, right? You have plans that you made early in the day and it's going to happen later in the afternoon, right? Your friend never shows up and never calls. Yeah, these type of people have no sense of having a... You know what I mean? Like, their, their lives are all over the place. They don't have any aim in life. They don't have any restraint. No like focus they're just they just go along with every single bandwagon that goes around why is that not good for a friend because your friends are going to just they're gonna abandon you they're gonna backstab you th those are the type of friends you don't need because if your friend cares about you he will let you know if your plans are canceled but if he doesn't even care to tell you he's not your friend he's only your friend because he because you probably have money or you have something that he likes like you buy 30 packs of brew every day and you guys have a you know a, you guys get drunk every day and that's the only reason he comes around you know those are those type of people the social climbing type when you sense that somebody or someone is only spending time with you in an effort to get close to your other friends that's a problem particularly when he or she is, attempts to cut you out of future plans who doesn't have friends like that right i used to have a friend like that i'm not going to name him but i introduced him to all of my friends and then he since I guess he has nothing better to do would hang out with them more 
And then, as time progressed, my friend took away all my friends. And he acted as if I wasn't the one that was in the circle with them either. There are people like that. Um, I've, you know, I don't want to like talk down on anybody, but when I was going to like high school and college, and I had the, and I was sitting next to the nerdy kid that everybody would pick on, I have a, I have an experience like none other, like over twice or three times, I've had the same experience. That every time you help that nerdy kid, and he becomes cool, he turns on you, dude. Every single time, every single time, man. It's just, it's weird. So be careful, you know, who you, who you, uh, who you're bringing around, who you're investing in meaningful relationships with, because people can be, people have a natural tendency to not be good people. It's, it's in here. It tells you there is not good. No one good. No, not one. The, the God that I serve has looked at everyone that's ever lived on this earth, and he says that none of us, <laughs> none of us are good. So there you go, the social climbing type, the sociopath that only, you know, who knows what, what, what motivates people like that. The gossipy type. You've heard this person talk S-H asterisk or star T about every single friend he or she has. This friend gives you all the dirt, rumors, and secrets without you even asking for it. What makes you think he or she doesn't do the same with your personal information? Thank God that I don't hang out with people like that. I've really never had a problem with this one. But if you have a friend that comes around and only wants to talk about God, like, you know, other people, that's not good. Gossiping is a horrible thing, man. It's, it's a great evil, man. It's a, you should have respect for other people and their dignity and their, and their, you know what I mean? You should have respect for that, man. And, uh, if you're going around saying, oh, that guy's a, he's a jerk, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then when you see him, hey, that's being a fake person, man. Don't practice that. Single white female. SWF refers to someone who tries desperately to act like you. Look like you generally emulate every aspect of your persona. Every, everything from your favorite new nail polish to the new hobby you just picked up. I've never had that one either. I guess I'm really not that cool, but I guess like to a certain extent, you know, I've experienced that. But, you know, yeah, it's kind of weird to have people around you that are, uh, that want to be exactly like you, I guess you can say. I don't know how that's a bad thing. You know, Jesus said, follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. I guess if you have the right attitude and your thoughts and your ideas are directed in the right direction, <laughs> then, you know what I mean? Then that's not a bad, I don't know why they call that single white female. <laughs> that's kind of a stereotype, guys. The Debbie Downer, negative Nancy, surrounding yourself with miserable people will only make you miserable. Try to talk to this friend about his or her negativity and try to give constructive advice. Some people will call themselves realists and only think of what is obvious in our circumstances. Yeah, things may be falling apart, relationships, appliances in the home. Maybe you're not keeping up with your bills. Things are falling apart. The realist is going to live in defeat and in and, and, and a bad attitude, man, because of these things. The realist is going to say that it is irrational to think that you should have any hope or have any, you know, sprightliness to you if you're going through things. A lot of people in the world live in falsehood when they think that worrying and complaining and, and nagging people, is go it, it means that you're really expressing a concern for things. Uh, God takes away all of our anxieties, man. God takes away all of our negativity because even though your circumstances may be terrible, our God is so much bigger than our circumstances. And, man, He's never failed on me, man. I mean, it's all, like, it's all about the conscience, though. You will never accept God because you don't think you need Him. You don't, you don't realize your need yet. And I hope to God you don't have to fall into a tragedy before you realize that. Because that's usually what people have to go through. The self-obsessed type. We all know that person who somehow always manages to make the conversation about him or herself and usually interrupts you in the process. Uh, yeah, you, you could have a, that friend, I guess, that thinks he's the alpha male or he thinks he's the, uh, 
the, the, the hottest one in the group or the most charismatic one in the group. I don't really have a problem with that, really, in my, in my honest opinion. It's kind of like, it's kind of like comical when I see people, they look at everything in their own perspective. Like, they don't ever look at anyone else's perspective. Like, they don't ever put themselves in your shoes. Those type of people can be dangerous because they, ha they lack compassion. They're greedy. They're selfish. They don't care about anything else but themselves. Those type of people are bad for you. Those people, those type of people can leech your life force off of you. And, excuse me, man, I'm, I'm barely getting better, so thank you. I feel great today. But anyways, yeah, don't, don't surround yourself with people who are always just out for their own gain. That's not a good friend, man. Friends are not, friends are there for each other. That's what makes a friend. Uh, not someone who's like, what do you have for me? You know what I mean? Like, that's not a friend. Anyways, the rival. The person will... This person will stop at nothing to steal any and all attention or praise away from you for his or her own self-validation or her own sense of validation. It is If there is an undeniable anything you can do, I can do better quality about this person, get your ass out of there. Destructive com competitiveness is, to is, is toxic to any relationship. It's called dissension. The Bible calls it dissension. God tells us to stop with the dissension. In our natural human condition, we tend to think we understand everybody's situation. <coughs> like, if somebody came up to me and said, Oh, somebody jacked a hundred dollars out of my wallet when it was sitting on that table right there. I'd be like, Oh, no, you, you probably just misplaced it. That's dissension. How come you won't just give your friend the benefit of the doubt? You know, like, I, I have to go through this every day. The government is spying on you. The government it has a rogue element in it that is corrupt. And it's targeting conservatives, tea partiers, libertarians, uh, Christians. But then people go, no, Matt, you're just, uh, you're just, uh, you're pushing fear and you're paranoid. And it's like, how come you just won't look at the evidence I'm pointing you to? How come you think everything has to be fine all the time? There's a sense of accountability that we run away from, and that is the fall of Adam in all of us. That we all run away from our accountability to things. We all run away from the things that are our duties. We should look at our duties like, <coughs> like, oh, I get to do that, not, oh, I have to do that. It's our attitude that needs an adjustment. It's our worldview that needs an adjustment. If you surround yourself with any of these people, the green-eyed monster, the flirt, the back-turner, the flake type, the social climbing type, the gossipy type, single white female, the Debbie Downer, negative Nancy, the self-obsessed type, the rival, you are going to let the devil have a foothold in your life. Well, how do I know this? Because the devil is a genius when it comes to manipulating people to try to take things away from you. Relationships, possessions, even money. It's funny that when you have money and possessions and great uh, possessions, people come around, don't they? People love to come around when you are prosperous and everything's going great for you. What about when you're Job and all of a sudden your house burns down and all your children die in it and all of your cattle stolen on the same day and your wife tells you to curse God? Where are your friends then? I'll tell you where your friends are at. If you're surrounding yourself with these kind of friends, those are the friends that are going to tell you, you must have done something to, re to deserve this. And whoa, anyone who condemns you is not your friend. Look to the Lord. He never condemns. He has forgiven your sins. If only you put your faith in Jesus Christ, he will free you from all condemnation, guilt, uh, shame, all your past failures and, 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 and shortcomings. You don't have to live thinking that, oh, you know, uh, you know, like, say for, uh, just for, like, kicks, you know what I mean? Say that this was my scenario. Oh, my, my dad was a drug addict, so that means I'm going to be a drug addict. See, these are the falsehoods that people fall into. That because somebody that gave birth to me was something, that that means that that's what I'm going to be. It doesn't matter who you, who your dad, who your mom is. God has a perfect plan for you. If only you surrender to Him and His will and say and admit and see yourself through the Ten Commandments and say, Whoa! 
I do need you. I do need forgiveness. I do need your righteousness. I do need forgiveness of, of all my sins because I've done so much harm to people un, unknowingly, ignorantly, you know, because I lack judgment because of the fall. But you guys, restoration of the Spirit is today. Heaven is here today. If only you accept it. Uh, you know, and, and when, when you do accept God, He will give you new desires, and you won't want to hang out with these kinds of shady people anymore. You'll want to invest your relationships in people that go to church. You'll want to invest your relationship in your family, believe it or not. You'll want to invest your relationships in people that God has given you everywhere that you go. The needy, the poor, the guy passing by in the mall, whatever. You know what I mean? He'll take away that selfish stone heart that you have and he will give you a heart of flesh and one that goes out and preaches the gospel but anyways i love you guys and i hope you have a good day god bless